Okay. Regarding a child who is found next to, to a doe, and there is a piece of dough in his hand, the mayor rules the dough taho. But the sages rule the tummy, because it is the nature of a child to pat dough. Regarding a dough which has chicken peck marks, and there is a tamay liquid inside its house, if there is a space between the liquid and the loaves of the chicken to dry their mouths on the ground, the dough is taho. And as regards a cow or a dog, if there is sufficient place for it to lick the li its lips with its tongue, and it regards all other animals, if there is space enough for the liquid to dry, Rav Eliezer says, ya I'm sorry, dry, Rav Eliezer Yaakov declares the tol taho in the case of a dog, for it is intelligent and it is not the nature to leave aside food and go to water. Um, if one throws tumor from place to place, whether he throws a loaf among keys or a key among loaves, the loaves are taho. The Yehuda says, if one throws a loaf among keys, the, um, the loaf is tummy, but one throws a key among loaves, the loaves are taho. If a sheritz was in the mouth of a weasel and a weasel was walking over bread loaves of truma, and it is questionable whether it touched the loaves or did not touch them, this doubt is ruled taho. Okay, that's it, right? That's it, correct? Um, we got up to get up to base. Sure. I, that, you, you did, did the one with the, with the shirts in the mouth of the weasel? Right, I did that. Okay, cool. Then we're next. Okay. okay with, uh, so once again, uh, Gimel talks again about the um, the shirts in the mouth of the weasel, but Nevele, and also um, a situation with a uh, Nevele in, the, in a dog's mouth. Nevele also has, has tumor. Okay, it also is an upper tumor. But Avru Bain had to him, and these animals walked through a bunch of uh, Tahor people. Or she Avru to Horim Benehim, or they were standing still, and a Tahor person walked past the dog or past the weasel. Svekan Tahor Mipne She'ein Le Tumamakom. So normally, what we'd say is if an adult, uh, if an adult has a sapek, that happened, uh, that happened in uh, even in Rishus in Rishus in, in Rishus Hayachid, we say. Sorry, your sapek is tame because you are uh, you're you're intelligent enough to be on to ask the question and to and to check out for yourself. And since you don't know, we're going to treat you as tame. However, because the uh, the tumor what did not have a fixed place, it was being carried by another creature, so it didn't have a fixed place. So just like in the previous Mishnah, we say it didn't. It, 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 therefore, the sapek is tahor, even though it's to do with pikeh. No. And what happened if they dropped it on the ground? And now they're busy scratching on the ground and uh, and uh, before they before they eat it. Okay. But Amar. So if somebody says, I walked past that dog. And I, I'm actually not sure if I touched the tumor or if I didn't touch the tumor. Okay, so that's a classic case. Sveiko tame. That's a. Uh, this is this is exactly the case where the, the now the tum is on the ground. It's got a fixed place. It, it's got a, it's got a, and as opposed to being in the mouth of another creature. Okay, the suffix is tamim pimpesha yesh the tumim makom. It's got a place. Okay, so we're getting we're getting uh, a bunch of rules together as to in to deal with in cases of suffix. Okay, and here comes another one. Kizayis mina meis b'fiha orev. Now he has an interesting one. A, a, a raven went and to the battlefield and and grabbed a piece of flesh off a, off one of somebody who fell in in battle, okay. And now it's flying. And it flies over a bunch of people. And somebody saw this happen, and they saw this raven fly more or less over them. And he's not sure. Okay. And the man was standing in an alleyway, and he saw this uh, or a private domain at least. And he saw this raven flying over him with a piece of, of corpse flesh in its mouth. Now the corpse flesh is metame but or hell. We're right. not the previous Mishnah Mishnah, we were talking about touch. Now we're talking about or hell. And you see that we're going to see that or hell operates in a fundamentally different way than touch. Okay. So even though the we we said that this tumor doesn't have a makom because it's in in the mouth of a of a raven, it's busy flying around. Safek, okay, Safek Adam, Tame, Safek Kalim, Tahor. So if it's a person, the person can be asked. And uh, and once again, we revert to the to the position of saying that if we're not sure if, he, if there, there was an oil hell on top of him, then the Safek becomes Tame. Mm -hmm. So now that's a, that's a big departure from where we, when we were talking about Tach, when we were talking about the Tumah of Tach, 
There, if the tuma doesn't have a place, then we say the suffix is always tahor. Oh. Here, when it comes to, to ohel, somehow ohel is more machmir to the point where where it doesn't matter that it didn't have, that it was in the mouth of an of a of a raven. Um, the ohel the ohel will work even uh, even though it doesn't have a it doesn't have a fixed place. Okay, but but again, it now now it falls back to the question of. Um, is the person is the subject of the of the doubt a bardas? So if it's an adult, a pikeach, then if he's a bardas, then he then the suffix is tame. But if it's a kli, an inanimate object, suffix is tahor. Okay. Okay. Now here comes another another different case. A guy is go, is going to the well and he and he fills up uh, ten buckets, and as he's pouring them out, he finds a share it's a dead share it's in one of them well who tame only that bucket is, is considered tame and then all the rest of the buckets are tahor now why would you thought the other ones are tame because maybe they're sticking their the buckets in and and, and the buckets are and, and the buckets touched against the dead share it's in the well so you know maybe the you know the, the right. possible you could say that the share it's came out from the well and the other buckets then brushed against it and uh and therefore they would be tame but we say no the chazaka. The chazaka is where was it found? That's where it was. And we could even say that, you know, he was filling up the buckets and he didn't notice that there was a dead chariot in the bucket when he filled it up. So we don't, we don't, uh, we don't cause tumor on the rest of the buckets just because you found a, a chariot in one of them. What if he's pouring from one kli to another? The ninsa chariots betachton and he finds a dead chariot in the bottom kli. Aelion Tahor, you don't you don't say, oh, the, maybe the sherets was in the in the upper one and it fell into the lower one. This is where it was found. So that's an application of the principle that we learned a couple of Mishnahis ago, that we that all the tumors are Keshas Mitsyasan. It's where we assume that it was there all the time. And we don't, mm -hmm. we don't presume that there unless there's a reason to presume, like for example, if he checked the bucket, the lower bucket before. And he saw the lower bucket was empty. Now he now he pours water into the lower bucket, and he finds water and a dead chariot in there. Okay, so in my last thought, you have to assume that the bucket that it came from the upper from the upper bucket. But right. uh, but but if you didn't check, then we just assume that it was there all the time. Okay, Mishnah Hey, Al Shisha Sveikos Sorfinisa Truma. Okay, so let's just uh, take a little bit of background over here. Burning Truma. So first of all, tahor, truma tahora is uh, is something that kohanim uh, can eat, and and should eat, and they're not allowed to destroy. You're, you're not allowed to just stam destroy truma. It's got a certain level of kedusha. Now, what happens if truma becomes tame? If it's a vadai truma midoraisa, absolutely, you have to burn it because mm -hmm. you can't take the chance that somebody's going to eat it. It has to be destroyed, and nobody's allowed to eat it. Therefore, it must be destroyed. Um, or by the way, you can a coin can feed uh, tame truma to his animals, but let's just say he doesn't have any animals available. Then it it can and should be burnt. Yeah. All right, but what happens if you have a um, a tuma durabonin or a tuma that um, well sorry not a tuma durabonin but a, a suffix tuma a, a suffix tuma. So we're not sure this this uh, if the if the sherets touched this uh, this this truma, um, and now it's 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 at the point where the the kohen would not would not be allowed to eat the truma, because because there's a suffix truma in it. On the other hand, we don't know for sure that it is tame, and therefore it's called uh, it's taloi. The, the the truma has to be set aside and left to decay by itself. It, can, it cannot be burned and it cannot be eaten. So it's got to just be put aside and left to decompose. It can't be burned because it's a suffix. Right. Because it's a suffix, it can't be burned. But now, this mission is coming to give us an exception to the rule that there are certain sveikos that we do allow you to, to, uh, to burn truma for. And they're not exactly sveikos, but they're dine durabonin that, uh, that were paskind because of an, un an underlying suffix. Okay, and we'll see them. We'll see the examples as we go in, and you'll understand what we're talking about. So there are six sveikos that allow us to burn truma. I'll sveik base pras. So let's just start with this, the beta pras. The base pras, as we've learned before in Ohalos, is uh, is a grave that was plowed over. Okay, so now the field is all called a base pras, and it's all tame derabonan. 
Why is it tame? Because we're concerned that there is a small piece of bone somewhere in this field. And when you walked in it, you didn't realize that you touched it. And now you're and now you're tame. Now, the whole base of pras is based on suffix. Okay, because you might have touched a piece of bone that got plowed over. Now, we don't know for sure in the world of reality, in the world of Doraisa, um, chances are you didn't walk in a bone. But Rabonin Paskin, base a pras, because it's a, because there's a suffix of, of coming into contact with uh, with the dead. And now, because that's now a psak to Rabonin, this field does have tumor. So if somebody walked through a base of pras, and then he touched some tumor, that tumor is tame. It's tame de Rabonin, and it's based on a suffix, but nonetheless, we allow you to burn the, the tumor because this is a tame, this is a person. We, we pass a, 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 a tumor on it, and therefore it gets burned. Okay, even though the, the, the original reason for the base of press is because of suffix. Also, al sfeik afar abame eret amim. Exactly the same reason as uh, as base press, almost exactly the same reason. Um, when you go to chutzlar, it's all of the everything in chutzlar is tame. For the same reason as a base press, because we're worried that the non-Jews haven't buried their dead properly, and you may have walked over a grave somewhere. And okay, it's all based on safek. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But the psak is that eretz amim is tame. If somebody if somebody went went to chutzlar, it's came back and touched truma. Goodbye truma, burn it. Hey. I'll speak big day Amaharitz. So an Amaharitz who's not careful with Tara and Tuma, um, his his clothing may have been sat on by his wife who was a nida, and he didn't notice, whatever. So because of that suffix, those clothes are tame, as uh, are tame, tame from the label of a zav, which means that they're uh, they're an avhatuma. If somebody put, touches it, he becomes a rishon, and if and if they so and then they they touch Tuma, goodbye Tuma. Okay, I'll, but again, it's it's based on the doubt, but nonetheless, it's a psak. It's a psak that this person is tame, or oh, the the clothing art, the, the clothing is tame. Okay, I'll speak kalim hanim tzayim. What about uh, stam kalim that are found in the street? Okay, because it could have belonged to an amaritz, it could have become tame. So these things are there's a psak again that they are tame. I'll speak harukin hanim tzayim. If if somebody's walking in the street and uh, and they find uh, saliva. On the side of the street, okay. If this was spat by a zav um, or a nida, then that that liquid is matame the person. So if again, if somebody touched that, uh, if somebody accidentally stood on it, and then they become tame, um, then the uh, that, that that again, it's it's based on the suffix, but nonetheless, there's a psak that they become tame. And al sveik may raglay may raglay adam shahin keneged may raglay behema, and also. Um, urine that was from a person it, it, it gets compared it, it, it's verified as, as human urine by comparing it to animal urine don't ask me how they know the difference but apparently it's uh, it's distinguishable to those who know um, so once it's confirmed that it's human urine and we don't know where it came from it's uh, got the same it's got the same din as the saliva that was found in the street could have come from a zab could have come from a nida um, and therefore it's uh, anyone who touches it it becomes tame. Alvadai Magan. This is so we're talking about when somebody definitely touched one of these six things above. Shehu Safek Tumasan. And that is they themselves were paskind because of a reason of Safek. Sorfin is a truma. So that's good enough to burn truma, as opposed to normal Safek cases where we just suspend the, the, the truma and are not allowed to eat it and not allowed to burn it. Rabbi Yossi Yomer Af al Safek Magan Birshasayachid. He says, um, even if you if there's a suffix of touching a of, of touching a tumor in Rosh Yachid, that also is paskand as as tame, and therefore if somebody w w in that situation touched tumor, you'd be allowed to burn it. They say, no, this is not one of our six categories. If somebody uh, became uh, became suffix tame in Rosh Yachid, and then they touched truma. The, uh, we, we consider them tame basafek, and therefore the truma is suspended, it may not be burned. If the suffix took place in the Rosh Hashanah, then everyone agrees that he's tahor and he can carry on eating his truma. Okay. Okay. On to Aleph Dalad. And with animals, the hide, the gravy, the spices, the elo, the bones, the gil, 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 gil. The uh, horns, the hooves combined to convey the tomb of foods, but not the tomb of Nevela. 
Similarly, if one slaughters an non-kosher animal for a Don Jew and it's convulsing, it convert it, it, it converts conver it conveys the tumor of foods, but not the tumor of nevela until it dies or it chops off its head. The Torah has provided more things that convey the tumor of foods, thus they convey the tumor of nevela. Fats that contract the tumor from an ava tumor and food that contract the tumor from a derivative tumor combine with one another to convey tumor according to the level of the level, lesser of two. How so? The volume of half of an egg of Rishon food and the volume of half an egg of Shani food and that one mixed together is a Shani. The volume of an egg of Shani food and the volume of a half an egg of Slishi food that one mixed together is Slishi. The volume of an egg of Rishon food and the volume of an egg of um, Shani food that one mixed together is a Rishon. If he separated them, that is a Shani and this is a Shani. If this one fell by itself and one fell by onto a loaf of Truma, they disqualified it. If they both fell together, they make it a Shani. The volume of an egg of shani food and the volume of an egg of shlishi food that one mixed together it is a shani. If you split them, this one is a shlishi and that one is a shlishi. If this one fell by itself and that one fell by itself onto a loaf of chuma, they do not disqualify it. If they both fell together, they make a shlishi. The volume of an egg of reshown food and the volume of an egg of shlishi food that one mixed together is a reshown. If he split them, this one is a shani and that one is a shani because even the shlishi that touched the reshown became a shani. The volume of two eggs is a rishon, and the volume of two eggs is shani food that one mixed together is a rishon. And if you split them in two, this one is a rishon, and that one is a uh, that one is a plain. That one is a rishon. Into three or four, three or into three or four, they are shani. The volume of two eggs is shani food, and the volume of two eggs is shlishi food that one mixed together is a shani. If one split them in two, this one is a shani, and that one is a shani. Into three or four, it is a shlishi. Okay, so I have a feeling because when I went over this and you know read, read it, maybe I put my bookmark in the wrong place. But it seems to me that we did this last yesterday, the same three I just read. No, there 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 are similar cases, but uh, but according to I'm I've got the schedule open and that we're in the right place. Okay, it just seems so for me. I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, para, para, uh, gimel al. Seven days before the burning of the power, they would sequester the Kohen, who was to burn the power from his house to the chamber in the front of the Bira. In the northeast corner of the temple, it was called the Stone House, and they would sprinkle Mekatas on him on all seven days from all the Katas, the ashes that were there. Iran Yoshi says he would sprinkle Mekatas on him and only on the third and seventh days. But Kenina ben Sagan, a Kohen, says they would sprinkle the Mekatas on the Kohen who burned the power on all seven days, but they would sprinkle the Mekatas on the Kohen ghetto permitted the service of Yom Kippur only on the third and seventh days. There were courtyards in Yerushalayim built on bedrock, and beneath them was a uh, hollow because of a concern for a grave of the deep. They would bring pregnant women, and they would give birth there, and they would have children there. We had the children there, and they would bring oxen with doors on their backs, and the children would sit on top of them with cups of stone in their hands. When they would reach the spring of Shiloh, the children would descend, fill the cups. They would then descend and sit on top of the doors. And Rabbi Yossi says, from his place, the child would lower the cup and fill it. They came to the Temple Mount and descended, and beneath the Temple Mount, its courtyards were hollow because of certain concern for a grave of the deep. And at the entrance of the courtyard was installed a jug of Kato's ashes, and they brought a male sheep and tied a rope between its horns, and they tied the other end of the rope to a stick and wrapped the rope around it and threw the stick into the jug, and they hit the male sheep who sprang backward, and he took the ashes and consecrated the water using enough ashes so as to be visible on the surface of the water. Rabbi Yossi says, do not give the seducers room to hold sway over us. Rather, he took the ashes from the jug and consecrated the water. Okay. Helen. Um, the threads of a sheep of a scarf of hats and a head shawl, their measure is six finger breadths. Threads of an undergarment, their measure is ten finger breadths. The threads of an overcoat, of a veil, of a shirt, or of a mantle, their measure is three finger breadths. The fringe of an old woman's cap, of an arrow facing cover, face of covering, of kukan, of a hollow belt, of a turban, or a petition, their measure is whatever the length of the fringes may be. The mattresses of wool, six of linen, three sheets, three, uh, 12 to purchase, two trousers, and one sherp, one mantle, one winter cloak are considered consecutive with respect to tumor and to sprinkling. If the quantity is more than this, they are viewed as connected with respect to tumor, but not with respect to sprinkling. And Rabbi Yossi says, not even with respect to tumor. 
The cord of a plummet is measured as 12. The plummet cord of carpenters is measured as 18. And the, the mat of milders is measured as 50 amos, more than three length, three, more than these lengths, even if one desires to restrain, it is tahor. And those of plasters and of artists are measured is at any length. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Kavita Mako and Gara were not brought by halves, rather, he brings a full Isaran and divides it and offers half in the morning and half in the afternoon. If a Kohen offered half in the morning and died, and they appointed another Kohen in his place, he should not bring half an Isaran of his own, nor half of the first one's Isaran. Rather, he brings a full Isaran and divides it in half, and he offers half, and half is destroyed. Thus, two halves are orphaned and two halves are destroyed. If they did not appoint another coin from whom what was brought, from Shimon says from the public, and Behuda says from the heirs, and it was offered, and it was offered whole. Um, all milk offerings are brought as, ma as matzah, except for the leavened bread of the Kaldah offering and the Shtei Halechem, which are brought leavened. The mayor says he abstracts sourdough for them from within themselves and levers, leavens them. Rabbi Huda says this too is not preferred. Rather, he brings sourdough, places it within the measure, and then fills the measure. They said to him, this too would be a def deficient or excessive. All mental offerings are needed with milk on water, and one guards them from becoming leavened. And if it's remained to become leavened, the transgression is a prohibition. As it's written, any mental offering which shall offer to Hashem shall not be made leavened. And they are liable to be needing its arrangement for it and for its baking. There are... Um, that was three? That's it. That's three. All right, yeah. Okay, and we have um, Dharam. Okay, the Dharam, Zion, Zion. One who says to his wife, call him your handiwork to me. They are calling from my mouth, or they are calling him to my mouth. It is forbidden whatever is received in exchange for them, or whatever grieves or grows from them. With respect to my eating, with respect to my tasting, it is permitted whatever is receiving received in exchange for them and whatever grows from them. If a thing whose seed decomposes, but for a thing whose seed does not compose, even what is grown from it, from what is grown is forbidden. If a person says, what, what, when, what, I'm sorry, what you make I shall not eat until Pesach, or what you make I shall not wear until Pesach. When she makes before Pesach, he's permitted to eat or wear after Pesach, what you make until Pesach I shall not eat, or whatever you make until Pesach I shall not wear. He's forbidden to eat or wear of the Pesach, whatever is made before Pesach. If a person said, Kohen, on whatever benefit you have from me before Pesach, if you go to your father's house before the festival, if she went before Pesach, she's forbidden to have any benefit from him until Pesach. If she went after Pesach, she is liable for he shall not break his word. Kohen, on whatever benefit you have from me before the festival, if you go to your father's house before Pesach, if she went before Pesach, she's forbidden to benefit from him until after the festival, but she's forbidden to go after Pesach. Okay. And we are on Shani. Okay, my Shani. Hey, Cameron Ravai, Bay Shimi said it is not liable to the fifth or to beer, and where Bay says it is. Bay Chama says it is liable to parrot and it is liable to Oliet, but the poor redeem themselves, and the base hill says all goes to the wine press. How do they redeem Neta Ravai? He places the basket before them and says, how much does a person want to redeem for himself for a sale for the provision that the expenses be borne for his household? And he puts down the money and says, anything gathered from this is redeemed with this money. So many, so many baskets for a seller. And in this, in the seventh year, redeems it for its value. And if we all, and if all was redeemed Hefka, redeemed rented Hefka is only the cost of gathering. If one redeems his own rent, net of a buy, he must add a fifth of it, whether it's his or was given to him as a gift. Okay. Good. And that's it. Okay. Okay. I want to, I told you.